we start our lecture with this project that's in high school near Munich. It's called Schmuttertal Gymnasium. And um, it's a joint project of uh, Florian Nagler and Hermann Kaufmann. And it's a wooden building, as you can see. All the uh, wooden uh, structural elements are visible, which is something that we made. We made progress uh, a few years ago. That this uh, wouldn't be possible, and um, it has uh, like um, special. They gave up their classrooms and and they built a cluster, so they have different options for for working and learning together, and one. Uh, the goal of the project was, was to be um, uh, energy neutral in the running of the building. And the idea was to have the internal gains, as we are all heat sources, uh, to heat up the building and prevent the losses by ventilation with a ventilation system. So this is only the ventilation system of the school. And as you can see, there are four buildings, four parts of this building, one, two, three, and this is the um, this is the, uh, the gymnasium. And uh, we have the um, the part where all the ventilation system is located is under the aula, so it, it's a really, really big room. It goes like this, and it's four times more than that. And fortunately, we had an, um, a science project going along with this building. So we had a, like a time frame of three years. So we could kind of tweak the facility to make it work so we can achieve the goal of energy neutrality. And so we have the photovoltaic on the, the PV on the roof. And we have the system which kind of collects all the inter internal gains. And so this worked out after three years of uh, working on it. So, and, and we thought, what, what, about, what, is the, uh, what about the projects where we don't have these three years to kind of tweak the, t the stuff? Because in the beginning, most of it wasn't really working as well. And, and here you can see also the construction was kind of challenging. This is a partition wall between two classrooms. And as you can see, there are nine layers before you have all the, so this is structural, then you have all the uh, fire protection, then you need, um, you need to make it uh, noise proof, and then you have the acoustics, so you need to have absorbing materials, so all this adds up. And we tried to, and reflected on that and said, maybe it should be simpler. And um, we monitored the school for three years, like I told you, but we also monitored other schools, 12 other schools, like some uh, architectural icons as well. And, uh, this is the Schmuttertal Gymnasium, the one I was talking about, and this is an old school from 1898. And we did some measurements. So this is like a, a, a usual day. So one, two, three, four, five days. So this is the building with the ventilation system. And this is the more than 100 year old building with no ventilation system. And as you can see, there are some spikes in CO2, but all in all, they performed quite similarly. And we were kind of inspired and said, okay, if this building achieves the same uh, like uh, room parameters, then this uh, highly technical building, and it is built like this. So it's just a brick wall, uh, reinforced concrete slabs. So maybe we should try to do this in, in today's 
uh, time. And as you can see, we say, okay, we, we try to prove that it is possible to build simpler with the concrete, with wooden construction, with brick construction. So this is kind of an attempt to see if it's possible. And these are the materials that we, that we chose for the outer layers. So this is the infra light concrete. So the, the gravel in the sand is swapped out with a very porous, very light material. So we only need half a meter to have, I don't know, acceptable insulation values. And, and the wood and the uh, brick, they, 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 they have uh, like air cavities inside them to, ma to make them more insulating. So that's the material we chose. And usually we, sh we start with the details because we think we should design a building alongside with the construction. And on the left hand side, you can see this is like the, the normal concrete building as we do it today. And this is the version that we try to build. And, and, and I for, for, we forgot to uh, draw one screw here and one screw there, but all in all, that's, that's how this, uh, this construction works. And this is the brick construction. Usually you have some kind of thing that goes over the, the window and you have something to kind of insulate uh, the front of the slab. And we try to do that in one material. I'm going to show you soon how we, how we did, how we achieved this. And in the wooden building, we took the solid wooden wall and combined it with a uh, reinforced concrete slab. And I'm, I'm going to show you why we cho chose the concrete slab. And we have a protecting layer of wood on the outside because we think this should be standing for at least 100 years. So we have to kind of protect it. All the buildings don't have uh, like a basement because the, the, the ground uh, water level was so high that it wasn't, uh, it was doable, but it was very complicated. So we said, okay, we don't need a basement. These are the outer walls. This is the infrared light concrete that is uh, poured into it. And you talked about the uh, reinforcement steel earlier. Uh, we, we didn't forget them, we just, we just don't need them. Because if we are forced to have a 50 centimeter thick wall to have the insulation, we don't need the uh, concrete to help the wall to kind of be load bearing and work structurally. But you run into a problem where we have to kind of get over a door or a window. So we chose this uh, round shape to kind of uh, work around that without the reinforcement. And this is the wooden building. So the same uh, concrete slab as a, as, a, as a base. And then we had these uh, recesses in the outer wall, so they kind of could, uh, could fit them in very easily. And the sound you hear is like the big screw, they, they put it up there and then it's kind of stable as is and they can work on it further. So this is the result of, of after one day. You can see all these little steel uh, spikes, they, they connect with the reinforced concrete and the, the green tape they, they are applying on the outer uh, wall is of course to kind of uh, keep the moisture of the concrete to seep into the wood, which worked kind of. As you can see, he, he is uh, kind of sanding the, the, the concrete that, that uh, ran down the, uh, the walls. And the, con uh, the brick construction, this is something you can just find at the market. So this is not really something special. They, they use this uh, sled to, to put in uh, even layer of of mortar between the layers, so the uh, the air cavities don't connect from one layer to the next. 
so it's closed off. And this is the way we kind of worked around the thing to get over the the window or the so they just took this stone, they cut it in half, and then they made this shape. And so we have three different buildings, different materials, um, but the same layout. And this is how they look from the outside. You have the protective cover of the uh, wooden building. And every building has eight flats, and they are now in use. And you might consider this as, an, as a low-tech approach to construction, because we said we want to get rid of the technical stuff. But we thought, what about if we say, what, what is no-tech architecture? If we had no technical support. And this is the team of the scientists, so we have my colleague and we are architects and the rest is engineers. So four engineers, two architects. And you kind of have to work together to solve this, these problems. And um, we said, okay, if it, when we, it's about residential multi-story buildings. And we said, okay, if we can figure out how to do one room, we, c we can kind of, we are set up to make a whole building out of it. So this is just one room. And we changed different, this is six meter thick, this is just three meter thick. They all have the, sa the same room size. So we have, and we have different window openings. So small windows, big windows. We, we uh, tried out every orientation, north, south, west, and so on. We have the three building types. We uh, tested three different kinds of glazing, sun protection glazing, th uh, three-layer glazing. So we have these variants, and we ran the simulation and checked out what is the, how is the room climate, how much heat do we need to put in the room to keep it at temperature, how does it heat up in summer? Does it stay cool? And to make it simple in this short time that we have, just one hour, this is the top four of things that we found out you should do to have to, to, to make it simpler. And the first one is thermal mass balances room temperature. What do I, do I mean by that? So if this is the air inside the room, you need a certain amount of energy to heat this up. Easy. But if you, if you need to heat up all the, all the slabs, all the inner walls, all the outer walls, you need a lot, of, lot more energy. So it's 50 to 300 times of that energy that you need to heat up the air. So when we are talking about room climate, we are not talking about the air in the room, but we are talking about the whole construction. And this is like a big lever to balance out room temperatures. And there's another effect. Does anybody know about um, 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 operative temperature? Does anybody know what that means? Operative temperature. This is the, the fell temperature. You have the room temperature that you can measure with a thermometer. And you have the, the radiation that comes from the surfaces. And the, the, if, the, if the wall is like 20 degrees cold and the air is 26 degrees cold, then you feel like it's 23. So it's kind of the, the middle. So this comes in handy as well. So the, the construction is balancing the air, but at the same time, if the air is heating up in summer for a short term, but the construction around you stays cool, then you don't feel the heat as much. As well in winter, if I have to open the window for a few minutes and the cold air gets into the room, if the 
construction stays warm, then I don't feel the cold as much. So it's easier, it's more comfortable for me to kind of use just regular ventilation via a window. So next thing we have to do, if you say, okay, we, we build a building that has a lot of thermal inertia, we have to kind of find ways to control it if that building gets hot, if you ha have like a very long period of hot, um, of hot weather. And we, so we designed these kind of windows, for instance, where you can kind of, uh, they, they do a lot of ventilation when you open them and all the um, all the flats had, can be ventilated in different directions so you can ventilate them very well. So you need to think about how can I ven ventilate the areas that uh, I'm using. Point three, and this might be kind of controversial, but we can talk about it, of course. The window glass area should equal 10 or 15% of the room area that we need to be lit, that needs to be lit. So this is a picture of the building. I, th I think it's a well-lit building. The, it has very high ceiling. It's uh, 3.1 meters. Uh, the, the, the floor is 3.1 uh, one meters uh, above the floor. And we kind of checked ourselves. So we say, okay, this, this, this is the, the, the area we want to uh, light up. And this is the size of the glass in the window. And this is 15%, so we are good. And as you can see, you can go around this. This is the north side, so maybe 16 is okay. On the south, we go for 13, but it kind of worked out that way. And we thought maybe maybe it, it's not as well lit at, as it should be. Maybe it's too dark because we, did, we, we had to decide uh, before building. So this is the, so we did a model and we did some little furniture and we put it in and we, we took it in the, in the backyard of the office and had, had a, like a black blanket on the other side and took this picture. And then we said, okay, it looks kind of well lit and it uh, matches. So the, 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 the building, this is when, this is uh, on a sunny day when there's snow outside. This is more like a dim day, but it works as well. Fourth point, um, consider future uses, which is, I guess, very important to you because that's what your project is about as well. Design invariants and separate the technical system from the building. What do I mean by that? Um, does anybody know this book? Clay. Great book. He's the he's the author of the Earth Catalog as well. If you know that book, maybe. And he, this is uh, two pictures that, that he shows on the cover as well. And as you can see, this this is the plan that they drew up for these buildings, and they were kind of erected in this like serial manner. And this is how these buildings look after a few years, actually more than hundred years later. And they added some balconies in the front, they had some additions to the building, they even uh, made them higher, and so radical change, but then if you, if you look closely, some things stay exactly the same, even these kind of weird cornices, they, ca they kept it because it sh maybe it, it was they had to keep it because it was cold, or maybe they said, okay, this is kind of how we want the building to look like. But so there's, there's lots of change happening. And the, the book is full of examples of change that happens over certain periods of time. And the author uh, draws the co conclusion from that and says, okay, every family is changing. 
and the house has no it has to change with the families and i guess you probably know this book it's it's kind of it uh, the same story they have the secret building and this is over 24 years and every other year the the tenants of the of the levels of the uh, of the office levels they change and they start remodeling floor so they swap out a lot of drywall in this, in these buildings and it's not about the uh, the lifespan of the drywall as a material it's about the use so the use of the building changes so that so the material changes as well so we if we talk about like life cycle we have to take the human action into account as well and that's why he arrived at these numbers he said the uh, 7s so he says site two billion years if we are lucky structure 100 years plus minus it's just a rough number the skin layer roof 50 years services meaning technical services like heating and stuff like that space plan which is how is the room actually used and then he says stuff like furniture things like that and he, he says the building is not like a immor immobile thing it's not an immobilia it's in it's in fact a construct of shearing layers so every part of this building will be disassembled even in the lifespan of the building not in the in the end of life scenarios so this is like an ongoing process which is kind of your task to think about that and he said okay this is the way we do it usually we have the program we do the design we draw up the plans we do the construction the occupant comes and everything is ex as expected and see he says but it's never as, as expected it's always different so maybe think about scenarios and maybe the client doesn't care because he has like his rigid program and he wants that to be fulfilled but at least we as architects should care to say okay what what are different scenarios for this building and if you can find a bo book there's a bbc mr author by the way there's a bbc series of six uh six um episodes 30 minutes so you can watch it in three hours or w w once a, a night or something and so we got inspired by that and, and that's why we said okay if we build it simply we want to have it as separated as possible so there is this uh, unenforced inner wall of, co of just regular concrete you have the outer wall with the infralight concrete for insulation then you have the ceiling which is reinforced with steel of course and then there's just this recess so if you build up the building then you take the window you put it in and then you put the flooring then you are done i mean there's some we have we had prefabricated bathrooms which were put in right on the side and then this is what i'm talking about this these are the, the windows we had some lodger the the construction workers that didn't know that this was planned to be the lodger so we just swapped out the windows with a railing on the outside and then we built this wooden structure inside it to have the lodger and then you have some uh, non-load bearing walls inside and then this is uh, like the built-in furniture and the good thing about this is you can kind of go backwards at any, any time and you can, can go forward any time and you don't have to destroy anything and so we separated the the construction and the technical services so the the uh, electricity running to this outlet is behind this floorboard and uh, 
uh, the radiators are very close to the to the vertical shafts, so it's just one meter of uh, of um, uh, tubing. So everything else in this area, there, there's no there's no uh, technical stuff happening anywhere. And even with the, this is like the worst case scenario, you have electricity, you have TV and you have internet, so it's three. And so every, um, it's just one, it's just one, one, and, and everything is connected on this one wire per room. So if you remove that one wire, behind the floorboard and it, it's all clean again. And for, uh, we have a longer lecture about this, which goes about three hours, uh, but we did a book and I, I brought it with me because I, I found it was not in your reading, um, in your reading list. Yeah. I get it later. It's it's an English version of that book, so you can uh, you can all read it. And the next thing we we did we put up some some sensors in the building because we said okay we had we did the simulation. We did the building. Now we have to kind of prove that what we are claiming is is really working out. So this is. Uh, we we left the the one story uh, the one the one room apartment this one uh, we left it empty oh, I have another plan yeah so this is where the where the technical stuff is heading over there and these this is a flat which is occupied and this is a flat which is occupied and we measure lots of things so we measure if the window is open or not we measure with this with this black ball we measure the uh, the temperature of the surfaces of the building of the room air co2 uh, humidity of course and we also know which radiator has what temperature and stuff like that so it's it's really it's really uh, fine and it's per minute so we are now in the process of kind of sifting through the data and we, we will publish a, a report about it in a few weeks on this page. So you can uh, have a look then. And now I just want to show you some other projects because if you see, okay, building simple is also very simple in planning. So you kind of you want to do it more and more. So this is a, um, a combination of the infralight construction and the wooden construction. I know we shouldn't build these small houses anymore, but this is like an, these are existing houses. So it's, it's no use to put something else in between it. So, and here you don't have to, to, to make a round uh, arc because the wooden construction kind of works as a beam, was it? And it, it works really nice together, the, the concrete and the wood. And we built another building, which is the size of the three uh, Forschungshäuser together. And this is, a, the, we use the outer wooden wall of the uh, of the wooden building. We have uh, wooden slabs, and we have some concrete construction inside. So this is the are the staircases. We have one elevator, and the outer walls are load bearing, and everything in between is. So this is this is the like the this is where the shafts are going. This is not like a it's no pillar or something. And this is the erection. So they, 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 we built the concrete staircases first, and this is some some steel profile that will carry the the wooden construction. And these are the outer walls. 
and this time the bathrooms they have a window to the outside so we we don't need ventilation in them as well yeah it's the same wood as the but it's thinner it's only 26 centimeter that's why it's it's comparably it it feels very very slim and they share one entrance which is a nice thing because we have some kind of address and usually we wanted to make some partition walls between the balconies but uh, uh, the group of people that built this house said no we don't we don't like the partition we want to kind of communicate we like the space so it's it's really it's it's really amazing if you if you are in this in the space so the like the thermal iner inertia for the for the building is the wall uh, to the staircase so every building shares that we we stuck to the rule of how big the windows should be and this is the the latest project that we are working on it's right beside the old forschung sources so we are doing new ones and this time we try to uh, reduce the gray energy of the building as well because we found out the, the wooden building even though it's a it's a hyper hybrid building but uh, reinforced concrete slabs was still by far the had the the lowest uh, gray energy and we said okay we should kind of try to move uh, forward in that so we have three different outer wall construction this time we have these shindles so it's only 23 centimeters thick and we have the wood frame building and this is um, it's just wooden pillars put together to form a wall and then you have an outer layer of insulation and the the inner walls are clay brick which is not burnt so you can kind of put this into water and, and uh, to turn it into clay again and then you can press it up again so it's really it's not that this is it's the same material uh, as the mortar that we use to kind of put it together uh, we have uh, Stampflehm and this is some kind of recycling product they use the the very fine particles of a uh, of a brick production and they press it down with it with two percent of cement to kind of have it stick together but it's there's no heat uh, in this process so it's kind of a, a recycling and we changed the um, the floor plans a bit we only have two flats per floor and this is the 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 thick load bearing wall and then there, there's this like kitchen open space area and you have uh, the, the option for three rooms or two rooms because we, we found out the, the 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 flats in the other buildings were too small there, there was not enough room for families and this we did uh phase a to d so a1 a2 a3 c1 c2 c3 b3 as well and and d as well so it's it's not really it's not exactly by by the standards so we included the d but as you can see these are the the buildings i just showed you you have some wooden material in the facade and in the, the inner walls were wood as well which are kind of have a like a nev negative offset and then you have the uh, or in this case positive and you have the ne negative uh, uh, GWP potential and this is how we achieve to kind of get it into the negative so you still have the the windows the yellow ones so this is the glass there's no way to produce glass uh, without 
having some kind of bed footprint. These are the technical systems of the buildings. And the blue ones is the foundation. We try to reduce the use of concrete. It's not, it's not just one slab, but it's just like a, a small frame. But it still has a negative impact. And then you have the, the wooden construction and the roof is wood as well, so the wooden construction kind of balances out the negative impact of the other buildings. The floor, or do you know, the floor is uh, it's concrete under the load-bearing walls, and the rest of it is, is just the gravel and some um, some um, some layer to keep the moisture out and then the, the insulation is on top of it, which is a wooden insulation. So you have a wooden insulation in this area of Gründung, which is kind of makes it a bit better. But I mean, the, these are details. Um, we can talk about for sure. So this is the, just to show you who, who was part of it. These are the, the guys who, who paid for all these buildings. Uh, this is the the place where we got the the time budget at the at the university budget to kind of work on the problems, and this is the photographer who took all the pictures. And we will have um, an event in Munich because I heard some of you are from Munich on the twentieth twentieth of April in the afternoon, where we will kind of show the. Uh, uh, the the report about measurements to you. Okay. Questions? Um, the, the outlets are in the... There are these non-load bearing walls and you have some little outlet on top of the wall and then you just make a a monkey swing yeah to to to, to put it wherever you want excuse me can you please move okay i was i was i was asking uh, about the the light fixture and the ceilings if there are any and you heard the the answer yeah and, uh, is there some kind of um Frostschürze? i don't know how to no we uh, we put in gravel which is kind of, uh, if it freezes under that gravel, it doesn't kind of move up because there's not enough uh, space between it so the ice can kind of. Um, and we use that measure uh, because we had, there, there was some, this was a uh, former industrial site. So there were some, some ground fillings because if this was like a, uh, there, there were railway tracks at the site. So we had to kind of remove a lot of uh, filled up material. So we had to kind of put in some load bearing stuff anyway. And this was kind of feasible to do this kind of, um, to do this kind of uh, foundation. Yeah. And, and, Maybe on another side, you would choose another foundation. So this is not like uh, something that is yeah, universally apl applicable. So, yeah, I just want to clarify uh, one thing. Could you maybe jump back to the other slide with the CO2 calculation? Yes, this because, one. Yeah, this one. Yeah, the wood or the timber here all looks again very positive in the whole calculation, but this is only the case because you have included the module D, yes. which uh, means um, thermal utilization. Yes. And this is just a note for the others. Yeah. Always keep this in mind and check which modules are included in those calculations because otherwise it can um, give you just uh, a wrong picture of the real situation. Yes, like I said, we 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 kind of did this. Uh, we did it like that, and I mean, it's just. I mean, th this this type of uh, analysis are, are a way to uh, 
help yourself in deciding how to choose your materials, how to choose your construction. So we, we know that there is, of course, in building a new building that there is, is an, a negative offset for the environment. But I mean, using this this game of numbers to to optimize it is is probably a way to achieve a, a better uh, result in the end. But I know it's that's what I say. It's we we didn't do this by code. That's what I said, right? Excuse me. If I exclude D, then then I would I would shift it by the offset that I they say okay you you use the wood uh, for for thermal energy uh, generation and that's you, that way you don't have to use other sources of energy and they just take the like the the medium footprint of this energy that you kind of replace and they put it in your project as a as a win so of course you you can argue about that so the the, the buildings wouldn't be uh, in the negative if we uh, took out C. But still, the building that is is like the winner in this category would be the winner in the other category as well. So it doesn't really matter in this way. How did you meet uh, the sound insulation uh, requirements in the partial solid uh, We did actually uh, take measures. And uh, we said for this, it's, it's, ju it's just the minimal uh, requirements that we have to fulfill. And uh, the, like the air insulation is about 5 or 10 dBs better than it uh, has to be. So it should be 55 and it's like 60 or 65, depends on the building. And uh, uh, the, the Tritschei was uh, 2 or 3 dBs better than it was, but we always had like soft floors. And this is, you are usually not allowed to do that, or you, you you are not allowed to take the soft floors into consideration uh, before building to prove that you kind of uh, uh, meet the requirements. But we did that anyway, so this is kind of something that we, so we achieved uh, the goals by measures, but the way we uh, went for it is, is not the way uh, which is, yeah, in this way, we just did it. Yeah, that was actually sort of my question. Is building simple complicated? So um, concerning especially codes and all that stuff. So it looks so simple. So you wonder why why doesn't everybody do it? But I assume you need some to last I mean, intensify and all that. Yeah, I, I mean, we, we had no, we had one Zulassung im Einzelfall for the uh, infra light concrete because this is just such a new material but that was the only one and for the new buildings we have one for the for the for the brick and for the for the uh, stampflame one uh, wall as well so th there there are some but it's not it's not that much and of course you need to do some research that's wh why it's nice that we have this like this time budget to consider these things but then, I mean, the planning is so much easier that it frees other, a lot of time up to do stuff like that and to worry about stuff like that, yeah. So it's a give and take. Can you, can you try to describe the amount of uh, planning that you need more to do something like that? I'm, I'm not meaning the research, but when, once you got uh, the insights, uh, it still must be more work. We, we were paid uh, on a hourly basis for this project because we said, okay, this is, we, we can kind of, and I guess it, it, it was, it was not uh, more money than it, it would be if it was like a regular, uh, like a building price based model. Talking about costs, what is the price for the Mauerwerk, Holzhybrid and Leichtbeton per yeah, square meter? Um, the Mauerwerk, 
brick one is um, one one thousand eighty per uh, gross area. Gross for area. If you if you want to, you have to add fifty percent if you want to have the like the because it's only four hundred. It's six hundred gross area per house and only four hundred for the yeah yeah because the it it's they are just too small for the other buildings we had a we had like uh twenty percent like a much better uh, rate so one eighty by or or is gross area fine with you okay one eighty gross area and the the wooden construction two hundred more and the infra uh, light concrete 200 more which uh, uh, most of that were, went into the outer walls because it was for them was was very very hard because they had to deliver lots of concrete and they had to have to, have to kind of stop their production their usually day-to-day -day business to make up for that so this this was for them a very expensive endeavor yeah Thank you very much. I think it's uh, a brilliant illustration of what we heard uh, on the on the theoretical side this morning from uh, Werner Sobeck's office. Thank you very much again to taking the time and uh, come here to AAC. Thank you very much. Thank you.